forgive you. And this man goes away. I'm sure pretty happy. Wouldn't you think so? Yeah. Listen, Jesus ain't done with this. Verse 28. Say, that's a beautiful picture of forgiveness. Why didn't Jesus just stop there? Because He wanted to show us our true nature. He wanted to show us what we, what Paul was telling us over there in Ephesians, the second chapter, how that we walked according to the course of the world. This man, he leaves, he's got joy. Verse 28, he says, But the same servant, who? The man that had been forgiven. The same servant, the man that had been forgiven for the trillion dollars debt. The same servant went out, and he found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. Now, I look this up too. You know how much a hundred pence would equivalent to today? Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. So here we find this man that had been forgiven of so much, Sister Nancy. He comes across someone who owes him a drop in the bucket compared to what he'd been forgiven of. Yeah. Listen then. So you would think that this man that had been forgiven of so much, that had obtained such mercy and grace, you would think that he in turn would say, I forgive you. I forgive you. Let's see what he did. The Bible says that he found a man that owed him 15 bucks. And he laid hands on him. And he took him by the throat. And he said, pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet. Now listen. This man that owed him $15 fell at his feet and besought him saying, have patience with me. And I will pay thee all. Oh, you notice any word in there? That's about the same thing that happened whenever this man owed the trillion dollars to the Lord that he went before and he said, have mercy on me, have patience on me. And he obtained mercy and he obtained patience. This man that owes him so little, and i got news for you today, no matter what anyone has ever done to you or the feelings you have toward them, it is nothing compared to the way your sin insulted God when you stood before Him. Well, that went over like a lead balloon. It doesn't compare, no matter what they've done to you in this life. It doesn't compare to what God has forgiven you of. So He says, please, have patience with me. Have mercy on me. Forgive me. And verse 30 says, And He would not. This man that had been given, forgiven so much for the bill, couldn't find it in his heart to forgive this man. I wonder today, listen to me. Listen to me by television. Listen to me by radio. Listen to me by internet. I wonder today if we find ourselves in the same position. We who have been forgiven, and I'm sure if I asked you to raise your hand this morning, you would tell me that God has forgiven you more than you can even say. Mm -hmm. That the mercy that He has shown to you, Brother Sleese, is more than you can even explain. Mm -hmm. Sister Nancy, that God's mercy and forgiveness has been for you unending. Really? I wonder how much of us today are like this servant that's been forgiven so much yet we can't find it in our heart to forgive others who compared to the debt that we owed is very small, even insignificant. He would not. But went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. My, 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 what a picture. Remember that this man had been forgiven of so much. But he couldn't find it in his heart to forgive of so little. Something that compared to what he had been forgiven of was nothing. Yeah, but Brother Billy, you don't understand what they've done. Oh, but I understand what we've done. 
I understand God's mercy and His compassion and His, at least to the degree of how he, for, he has forgiven me. But I don't understand us. I don't understand us. How in the world that we can rely on the forgiveness and the mercy of God yet not share that same mercy and forgiveness with others. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. We who have been forgiven of so much find it so hard to forgive others mm -hmm. when they do us wrong. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, after they had beat Him with the cat of nine tails, after they had put the thorns in His head, after they had spit on Him, after they had nailed Him to the cross, looks down on these people who were certainly not worthy of His forgiveness. I know today you don't feel like that person that you hate is worthy of your forgiveness. But Jesus hangs there and He looks down on all of these people who knew what they were doing when they did it and says, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. And He forgives them and asks the Father to do the same. Here we find Jesus explaining to Peter and the others about forgiveness. And He says, do you see the contrast too? Do you see this picture? This man who had been forgiven of so much, yet could not find it in his heart to forgive his servant of so little. Now listen to this. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, you see people were watching. These servants that stood by and they knew that this man had been forgiven of the trillion dollar debt. Had been forgiven of so much, Brother Sleese. So they watched this man who has been forgiven of so much and they see how he deals with those that he should forgive. But he don't forgive. And the Bible says that these servants that saw this, they went back and they told the Lord that had forgiven this man. It said they saw what was done and they were sorry. Did you know what that, that's what you do to people? When they see the way you act toward others. Oh, you go around, I'm saved, I'm saved. God's forgiven me, God's grace. He's, he's had mercy on me. Yeah, well, why don't you show that to your fellow man? Because Brother Bill, then they stand back and they see, there's that preacher over there, there's Brother Bill. And I've heard him preach, oh, and he's, you know, he, he used to be bad. And, and I know if God accept him, he'll accept me. He used to turn over toilets. And he used to drink and he used to cuss. And he used to, I'm turning over toilets while somebody was in it. I'm talking about serious offenses here, amen? It's pretty rough you doing your business somebody flips you over. But he used to do all of these mean and wicked things, but God has forgave him. Didn't they watch Brother Bill? What he does when somebody offends him. Come on. Oh, my, 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 my. I'm just saying Brother Bill because I know he don't care. I use him as an example. I can use me too. I didn't turn over no toilets, but I wasn't good. Amen. And they see how Brother Billy treats other people. And it makes them sorry. And they think, wait a minute. This is a man that has been forgiven of all of this. Yet he cannot find it in his heart to forgive his fellow man. You see, people watch what you do. Yes. You're going to kill your witness before them. If you spend your whole life with bitterness, anger, wrath, and malice toward others because you can't bring yourself to forgive them. When his fellow servant saw what was done, they were very sorry. And they came and told their Lord all that was done. Oh, what a witness that is. Amen. Yeah. Then his Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, Thou wicked servant, I forgave all of your debt because thou desirest me. Listen to this. <clears throat> oh, this is a Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and he delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. Then Jesus says, So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, 
If ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Somebody say, oh me. How can we who have been forgiven of so much in turn not forgive others? You say, Brother Billy, you don't understand what they've done to me. Yeah, well, do you understand what they did to Jesus? Can you compare what anybody in this life has done to you or yours to what they did to Jesus? The way they brutally tore Him to pieces. My goodness. You see, forgiveness today is a choice. God can't make you forgive nobody. Forgiveness is a choice, and we know this because of what is called the Lord's Prayer. When the disciples ask Him, how should we pray? He, part of it says this, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgiveness is a choice this morning. I choose to forgive you. My flesh don't like it. It goes against everything that my old pride has in its, you know, in its being, but I forgive you. I forgive you is a choice. Jesus didn't feel like forgiving you. He didn't feel like hanging from that cross and looking down. He didn't feel like forgiving those people, not in His physical body. Probably not even in His emotions, but in His spirit. There was a love and a compassion that we can't seem to grasp today because we spend our life hating other people and holding unforgiveness against them and thinking, well, I don't have to. I don't have to. No. But who's going to suffer from that? You, the person that you hold it against, and all of those that see that going on in your life. <clears throat> Corey Ten Boom, I don't know if you've heard of her or not, she was a Christian woman who survived a Nazi concentration camp. I can't think of the name of the book. They wrote a book, they had a movie about her. <coughs> this is what she said, she, she survived the Holocaust. She said, forgiveness is to set a prisoner free and to realize the prisoner was you. You see, unforgiveness, bitterness, and hatred against others hurts you probably more than it does anybody else. Even medical studies, Brother Sleese, had been done to show just how much bitterness affects people emotionally and physically their health, their mental well-being, bitterness and unforgiveness is a dangerous thing for you to harbor. Not only does it hurt you, but it hurts those like these fellow servants of this man that saw he could not bring himself to forgive. The Bible says they were sorry it brought grief to them. What kind of witness are you showing today if you who proclaim that God has forgiven you, yet you can't forgive other people. Yet we can't forgive other people. Amen. Listen, this ain't just plowing your corn this morning. It's plowing mine. We. It goes against our old nature because our old nature walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air, according to wrath. The Bible called us children of wrath before we were born again. I'll get even with you. An eye for an eye. Oh, we can understand that. Amen? It's the turning the other cheek that we have a problem with. But that's what Jesus told them. You have heard an eye for an eye. He said, but I say unto you, turn the other cheek. Amen? If He hits you on one cheek, turn so that He can hit you on the other one. My goodness. 